shooting out sparks over 38 states, the Canadian plains, and the tequila fields of Mexico. It's the Nocturnal Journal on 720 WGN with your guide, Dave Hoekstra. We're time traveling there. Thank you, Dan. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I didn't remix that whole thing today for me to not play it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, so welcome back to the Nocturnal Journal, and we're here with our friends Rick Wojcik from Dusty Groove and Val Camaletti from, am I saying that right? I've known yeah, you, yeah that's from, right. From, from Val's Howla in Oak Park, and I want to talk about Record Store Day. So tell us all what Record Store Day is, what it means, why is there a Record Store Day? You guys both have record stores. Well, I think it's the greatest thing that's ever been invented. It's most more fun than I've had in the last forty five years in the record industry. When was when did it start? I mean, I it started know. like was it six years ago or I seven even, years even ago? Seven, yeah. I, it, this yeah, might right. be the seventh year, and it's a day where recordstoreday.com, dot com. Whoever that may be, I know a couple of first names, but I don't really know who they are. You know, they they came out of uh, one of the guys had a store in Aus, uh, sorry, Atlanta. And, oh, okay. Uh, you know, it's some other industry people. And, you, you know, the thing is, it came along at a wonderful time because we had most of the sort of first decade of the millennium was about the death of the record industry. Right, about absolutely. About the death of, you know, people aren't buying anything. They're all downloading. They're all pirates. They're all criminals. And, you know, and people like us, you know, we know people are still buying records. There are still people out there who love it. There are still people who really need that sort of solid. And who want to talk about music and who right. want to care about right. music, you know. So and and so they started this thing. The first year was pretty rough because yeah. people didn't know what to expect. And people were thinking, well, all I have to do is they're going to put out this cool stuff and all I have to do is call and order it and they'll put it aside for you. What do you mean they won't put it aside well, for and, me? And the first you know. year, half the stuff didn't show up till yeah. July. Yeah, so. right. It didn't show up and, and we didn't know what we were going to get and yeah. we didn't know what the rules were. And and but people fell into it pretty quickly mm-hmm. and. I know a lot of people might say, you know, well, why have this one day? Well, if you just spread this stuff out and put out stuff every once in a while, it would all be ordinary. You'd call and they'd order it for you and hold it aside for you. And then you'd come and get it and it wouldn't be any fun at all. And this instead has become just a, now it can be a little crazy for some people but i personally and i don't know about you rick but hey, we i love have the crazy we, we I, grew up we love in it. crazy it's nice it's to see wonderful crazy again, i mean you know. to see a line an hour before you open a block and a half from your <laughs> see, that, store that bums me out though yeah. that oh man <laughs> yeah. well, but, but let, let, you know and let, let's step back it just a little bit because i think you know val's enthusiasm you know which is well placed i mean so you know what she's talking about is the record industry you know, at, at some point decided to start. And, and this was when they were, you know, seven years ago, they were like, oh, God, it's all, you know, nobody's going to buy anything. They started to put out these special things for this one day, the se- third Saturday in April. Right. And they said, well, we're going to make some special things. And it was very small at first. By the second year, it had doubled. By the third year, it had doubled after that. And what these are, these are the kinds of things that, you know, Rolling Stones picture sleeve single. They haven't made those in 30 years, you know, or unreleased tapes of, you know, some great artists that you've never heard. Um, you know, really special stuff. A lot of it is vinyl. It's very vinyl heavy. And and I'm going to disagree with Val because I think it's a great day. But what I've also seen, you know, six years ago, I used to say, well, this is great. Give it to us all year long. Now they are. I mean, one of the things well, I've seen as a major trend is the success of this day, which has shown people showing up. We have people showing up at three, two, three in the morning. Right. You know, and, and we got two blocks line before we open at eight. You know, to buy this stuff, which is very limited, now these labels are saying, wait a minute, there are customers. They've looked yeah, at these lines and said, hey, let's get these people in the store in, you know, March. Let's get them in the store in June. Let's and get to some the extent they do. Yeah. But but it loses something if it's available, even cool stuff, if it's available all the time. Right. This and what we have, which just thrills me, is we have just really – cool customers they're very patient they're generous they you know 
um, they are willing to accept whatever rules we set for what you can buy and how many you can pick up Which and what you can do. Which are usually set by the parent organization. We right, have to right. Sign more or less. Sort of draconian pledge that <laughs> says if we step out of line, we can never participate right. again. Right, yeah. a couple of years ago for the Sun Times, I did a story, and the guys at Numero Group got got slapped on the hand by oh, that yeah. organization yeah. for doing yeah. a pop up record store. Yeah, oh yeah. On well, record store day, how dare they do that? You but know? the <laughs> reality is that if you allow too much of that. I mean, we're already struck by the fact that, you know, an hour after you open, there's stuff on eBay right. for, you know, four times yeah. what the guy standing in line since two in the morning has been waiting for. But, you know, he's um, probably the guy that bought it when you open and went home and put it on eBay 45 sure. minutes later. And that's, you know, that's something they can't stop. You, they, mean, nobody can stop that. It's, it's going to happen. Writers, you know. It's going to happen. But it is it is fun and and. And I like to see that happen. And we also have, and I hope you have, and I hope a lot of stores have, the people who really oh, honestly yeah. Oh, yeah. come in yeah. just to celebrate their independent yeah. record store. They're not going to stand in line for the special stuff. They're just going to go, like, we put everything on sale that day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they just yeah. come to say, we just, it's it's yeah. record store day. We wanted to say hi, and we want to shop. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, we, you know, we're That's open so till 9, cool. and we're kicking them out the door at yeah. 9. You know, I mean, we get a magician. We're getting yeah. out food. You got the spinning wheel. all I've this done stuff, that. Yeah. you know. Just, it's, yeah. it's crazy, but it's it's great. And people are bringing their kids. People, will, it's a little bit like uh, church on Christmas and Easter. That's you know, right. Where you get if people, you, you know. You get and people you, and you're who are going to say, like, hey, I'd love to see you every other Sunday. But, you know, you're happy they're there. You know? Oh, it's, yeah. I, I think it's great fun. It's Saturday, April 18th. Two and weeks right. from Yeah, tomorrow. and what time does it start for each of you? Well, for time? us, it starts at 9, which is two hours earlier than we normally open. We normally open at 11. So we open at 9 with donuts and coffee for the early birds. For us, it's 8. And although we're giving out bagels and donuts yeah. and coffee at about six in the morning, so yeah. and I'll have a proxy that can stand in line for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that one. That's uh, cool. They'll what, get your bagel, though. You better be careful. <laughs> what are some of the hot items this year? I went, I've been glancing at the website this afternoon. I mean, there's some stuff like a stretch. I mean, the aha, I saw an aha picture sleeve and stuff. Or, you know, you know, I looked at 400 titles and I yeah, can't remember so one of them. You, you know, I, 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 I'm with you because I've got my little cheat sheets <laughs> yeah. in front of me here. But you know, every year to me the best stuff is the kind of stuff that they're putting out now that you know you wish you had been alive in the 60s to buy so you'll get like an animals 10 inch or you'll get a jeff right. back picture sleeve yeah, I saw that. or you know unreleased stuff like the organist larry young who we love you know they've got some unreleased stuff he did in paris during the height of his career or there's like a, a rare sun Ra live set that's never come out um you know there's beautiful packages of vintage stuff like they're doing the second box they did one of these on black friday of miles davis the original 10 inch lps he did for prestige records you know um, you know, just really great. And and to me, those are the highlights. There's a lot of people, and, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. Oh, oh sorry. That, uh, that uh, try to sneak things in. Uh, oh, know. yeah. So you get about, you know, half of it is like, hey, you know, my brother recorded something. Let's call Let's it pull it out on Record Store Day. Yeah. The other thing that's a little disturbing for me is there are some really outrageously high price stuff. Yes. yes. And that can be... A little disconcerting, yeah. you know, uh, the $60 and $70 and $80 and $100 box sets. Um, well, we just can't afford just, them because you can't return no, any of this stuff. You yeah. can't return uh-huh. any so if of it. charging you 200 bucks, you know, you're not going to The, the one thing that makes it difficult at our end for Record Store Day is we have to make this decision four weeks ago. Yeah. Nobody knows what's coming out. And so we have no way to gauge. The, it's always the thing that right. who, nobody is going to ask for this. Nobody's mentioned this band the yeah. entire year. Yeah. So, Nobody's going to. You know those are the first five calls we're going to get yeah. uh-huh. is for that stuff. And it's going to be a box set that's one hundred and thirty four ninety nine. Right. And And, you know, that's a little tough. But. It's and we know it's going to happen. We know people are going to try and jump on it. My favorite item of, was about two years ago was the Buck Owens coloring book. Oh, that I was thought, great. That, that was, was I thought that, that was, was the wonderful. best thing they've ever put out. Val, you opened in nineteen seventy two. I did. I, now at two thirty nine Harrison. Different right. Location. It was on South Boulevard in Oak Park, and it was the. I had already run a five a small five store chain in that same location from sixty seven. 
So, but in 72 is when it became Val's Hollow. And one reason I wanted to have you on the show is I know you've, it's 72, that's a long time to be. That's a record, long, I'm really story. old. <laughs> but, but I, I am mean, really I know 2012 really they had that house party and stuff. There's, so there's been ebbs and flows for you well, in the business. Well, I'll tell you, I've said this and I'll say it again Sue and, and again and again. Sue and, Sue and Jim Gill, right? Um, yeah, Sue and Jim Gill. Yeah. And mostly vinyl. If it, if this resurgence had not happened, I'm not sure I would still be there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mean, because the cost or the selling price of used CDs, which are a big thing, still not as big as they used to be, but they've dropped by half yeah. um, in terms of what you can sell them for. Because a lot of new CDs are only five ninety nine and right, six ninety nine, right, right. so what are you going to sell a used one for? Two dollars, mm -hmm. um, and so there just wasn't enough cash turning over. So the the vinyl resurgence, but yes, that jump in by friends um, to to keep us going to make it to allow us to buy the vinyl we needed for the two twenty twelve Christmas. Hmm. That was the big deal. The one thing I've heard, you know, and, and it's about whether it's a, a record store or a coffee shop or a restaurant. I mean, you have to make it like a cultural destination, a place where people can, you touch on it, a place where people can gather and stuff. Something they get, can't get online and stuff. Right. Can you talk oh. about each of your places being a, That's what a, a gathering place, us. a dusty groove? I always see a lot of times I see people from out of the country oh, in, yeah. in there. So tell me about it as a destination point and why that's well, important. Well, that's, I mean... You know, I kid customers all the time since I, I, I want to do that sort of thing uh, about the fact that, you know, somebody comes in the store, it's the first time, and they live in Downers Grove or something. And I say, are you kidding me? We get people from South Africa. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me Downers Grove is too far for you to come to Oak Park. But that's part of it is that I had a guy in a few weeks ago, a few, a few months ago, who said something about I could tell it was an English accent and I asked him why he was there. Did he come for Frank Lloyd Wright or Hemingway or you know and he said no I come for here and I said well here you mean my store here and he said oh yeah and I said how'd you find out about it? He said I read about you in a book in England. Yeah. You know I mean that old you, you rare get, new right? You got, yeah, a, good, you you got get, a good portrait in that book. You get you get what book is that? I don't know. It's a great book on used it was a a student, uh, she was kind of a doctorate student, right, in, in an English university, couple. and she did yeah. this whole sort of blog series. But then she went around and interviewed all of these record store owners, both in England and America, and, and talked about. To them. Yeah, and I had I forgot the interview completely because I said old, rare, new. It, it's been out for what seven years? Oh, or it's so. been out six Beautiful or seven book. years. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. But it's but that's part of it is the idea of create, and that when that happened in 2012. My question was, why would anybody donate or come to this party or do any of those things? Businesses go out all the time. Mm -hmm. Why does anybody care? Mm -hmm. And what I found out was that it wasn't just about the business existing. It was a part of the community. It is. And that's a big part of it. We're going to take a break for some spots. We'll be right back and talk more about Record Store Day, so don't go away. Welcome back to the Nocturnal Journal on 720 WGN. We're talking Record Store Day here. And Val, I, wanted, I didn't want to let you get out of here without talking about your life at Capitol Records. So we wanted to play a snippet of, of that. It was so long ago. <laughs> you, you mimeographed 16,000 copies of Sukiyaki oh, for a major God. Chicago rock I don't believe you remembered that well, story. Well, I, I read it somewhere. But. <laughs> Tell me that leads to another question. But tell me what you did at Capitol Records. Was that they have a thing here in Chicago, or were you? In it was. I was at thirteen twenty six South Michigan because that strip between Roosevelt Road and Cermak was Record Row right. in the fifties. And by the time I started in sixty two, um, it was still in there. VJ was at fourteen forty nine, Chess at twenty one twenty, and we were at thirteen twenty six. And I worked in the promotion department, although they had no idea. They thought they needed a secretary. They wouldn't have known how to dictate a letter if their lives depended on it. This was the record industry when it was absolutely <laughs> by the seat of the pants. I mean, there was no rhyme or reason. The first day I went to work there, there was no pen, no typewriter, no desk. I asked my boss, the promo guy, LP promo guy, what I should do. And he said, um, 
Well, why don't why don't you go over to that file cabinet over there and uh, clean it out and throw out the stuff we don't need? I said, I've been here three minutes. Do I know what we don't need? He said, oh, just just look at it. So this, just hold it up. So this music-obsessed young person, I was 22 at the time, pulls open a drawer, and it's packed from front to back with 8 by 10 candids of every famous musician who recorded for Capitol at the time, Sinatra and Dean Martin and Nat King Cole and Stan Kenton and Nancy Wilson. And and I remember this distinctly. I remember thinking, are they going to pay me to do this? Is <laughs> and you, this, and you throw them all away? Paid? Is that the story? I don't have a one. I mean, I threw away what we didn't need. What but back he told to that me song, we didn't why need. were you mimeographing the lyrics? Where were those going out to? Were they just going out to listeners? Do you remember? Well, you remember old WLS? Yeah. Maury Lathauer, who was LP promo guy, walked up to me, walked into the office one day, and he said, oh, we're going to do a promotion with LS. I said, okay, what are we going to do? Well, we told him if anybody wrote in for the lyrics to Sukiyaki, we'd send him a <laughs> translation. I said, you have to be kidding me. LS was 50, just like GN, yeah. 50,000 watt clear channel. We got, and at that time, there was no Xeroxing. It was a mimeograph machine. You got 75 copies. Every time you changed the 75 copies, you had to type another master. So what did you learn from there that you were able to apply in the record store business? Well, I think more than anything, I, I mean, I made some connections, but more than anything, it was about the music itself and about the people. I My connection was to be able to talk to people about music, and that was fun to do. And I had this wide-ranging taste um, that was I, – I, my, my goal was to be – in size, about the size of their bathroom, but a, a sort of reflection of Rose Records mm -hmm. in Chicago in those days, which I thought was just the pinnacle of what a record store could be. And I, I would have barely fit in their bathroom. I mean, it that's well, they were the big biggest were. record store in the they world. They were the biggest bathroom. record yeah. store in the world, and they were just this phenomenal place. Um, but it was, I mean, retail is is very different it's not the within the insides of the industry in the same way but it's it's all connected and it's the same there's a sort of mentality to the industry and people have circulated around it went from retail to major labels to indies to promotion to you know it's all connected. Very few people get rich, yeah. but yeah. you know, you just love the music. You know, there's a small handful, but you just they, there's no you know you you just you, you drink it, you you breathe it, you live it. You know, you just if you can find any way to suck on the teat of music, you know, whether you're a bar back in a club, or you know, working the racks at a record store, and these jobs are are shrinking. You know, yeah. unfortunately. Oh, yeah. you know. Or as Paul Natkin, I'm sure talked about, um, you know, the only reason he became a photographer is that he could get into right. the shows right. for free yeah. so <laughs> we've got a couple minutes so just uh, each of you give me the details again on, on record store day at your place i also you can if you can dovetail that with what happens in the day after record store day <laughs> that's that's when you might see me so each of you and then we we do great because they don't let us sell this stuff online during record store day and we're also a website we're a very yeah. big website so that sunday everybody who couldn't get everything in their hometowns and that includes many people around the world order from us so we have a giant sunday but that day you know, we're out there at 6 in the morning handing coffee out, donuts. We're going to have donuts from West Town Bakery, uh, bagels from New York Bagels. We're going to have the Empanadas food truck. We're going to have coffee from uh, Dark Matter. Uh, we've got a magician coming to work the crowd all afternoon. He's a great guy, very funny. We have a Wheel of Fortune giving away prizes to everyone. We also have all these free gifts, free gifts for the first 100 customers. Uh, you know, any kid that walks in the door, we've got pop. You know, it's just... We don't even have shows because we don't want to get in the way of giving stuff away, interacting, talking with the people like Val saying. That's the most important part, you know. And your address and website again? 1120 North Ashton Avenue, open at 8 a.m. on Record Store Day. Val. Uh, we will open at 9. We'll have the coffee and donuts for the early birds and stuff. We'll, music will start about 9. The guys who are founders of Funkadaisy. Uh, Lloyd Broadnax King and Paul Mertens is going to sit in on some stuff, Poydog pondering people, and uh, 
the guys from Tributosaurus did this show uh, two years ago and played for seven and a half hours. So wow. I have no idea what Lloyd's <laughs> going to do. I'm turning the stage over to him. We can't even mess with it. Um, so we'll have music all day. Everything in the store will be on sale. Um, we'll get our donuts from the Buzz Cafe, which is our home, yeah. our home diner right around the corner. So uh, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. And as far as the business is concerned, mostly what happens on Sunday for us is it's not a huge day for us, but it's a lot of people going. Oh, I thought that was next week. <laughs> oh no! Don't you have that Rolling Stones? Don't do you have any left? You know, so okay. that's what we face on Sunday. Well, thanks. We'll be back with Nocturnal Journey after this.